Hi, I'm Sheila Rogers. I started working for Dave at Late Night with David Letterman in 1991. And then I moved with Dave to CBS and I was there till 2015. I was a segment producer, a producer, and a supervising producer. One of the most memorable moments of my time at Letterman was my very first day on the job. They wanted to do a, a sketch of Dave showing the new employee around the office. So when I walked off the elevator, I was greeted by a camera crew and Dave saying hello to me. It certainly let everybody know that I had a new job. Sheila, do you like frozen yogurt? Very much. Oh, man, I love it. Here's how you can get it free if the commissary is not too crowded. Okay, wait, turn on. All right, Sheila, I don't know if anybody talked to you about your uh, pay, your salary, your, your annual uh, take-home fee, but this is where we determine it. Give, give me your coat. Rose, bring me the shot put. Well, you, you get the idea. Uh, this is how I started. Go ahead. Good luck. One shot. Here we go. Oh, oh! All right, well, it went down just under 10, so we'll start you around 8.5 if that's okay. In addition to the remote, I did appear occasionally in other sketches on the show. One day I had to wear a coat of cheese. I can't remember why. Another time I was in a game show called Towel Off. It's time to... Towel Off! Okay, contestants, you know the rules, so without further ado, ready, set, and time! One very memorable and wonderful moment was when Dave had announced that he was leaving late night and there was a lot of planning and discussion about who our last guest would be. Of course, our dream scenario was Bruce Springsteen. He was somebody we'd always wanted to have on the show and he was a tough get. He agreed to come on the show. He wanted it to be a surprise. It was wonderful to go into Dave's office and tell him that Bruce was going to do the last show. That was a proud moment for me. If, if I had known that, I'd have gotten on the piano years ago. Okay, another memorable moment from Late Night was uh, not a fun moment. I had finally booked one of the Rolling Stones. I was so excited. It was Charlie Watts, and he had a jazz side project. Everybody who performed on Late Night performed with our house band, who were magnificent musicians, and everybody was agreed to do it, and it was fine. And so Charlie showed up. He had his entire band with him. When I mentioned that our band would be performing with them, he said, oh, no, love, this is for jazz, whatever, quartet, and that's not how we do it. And I said, well, that's, that's what we had agreed to. He was so gentlemanly, and he said, that's fine, love. And he just packed up his things and left. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got a pretty good program. Gary Busey will be with us, and uh, also Orville Redenbacher will be here, and Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones will be joining us. <laughs> Charlie Watts will not be here. Charlie Watts will not be here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Let me ask. I'm positive I saw Charlie Watts here about a half an hour ago. Mm, he was he was billed to appear. He will no longer appear. Will not be on the program. Will not be on the program. Was going to be on the evening. program. Will not be on the program tonight. No. Right. I'm confused. Charlie Watts will be here. Charlie Watts will not be here. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Later that night, I happened to go out with some friends to a bar, and Charlie Watts was there, and he very kindly bought me a drink. So. It wasn't a total loss. Prince was such an amazing performer. We were so thrilled to have him on the show, but he had some idiosyncrasies. He didn't want to be addressed by our staff. He wanted you to go to his people, but I didn't know this. So in the elevator on the way down, I was telling him something about what was going to happen in the show. And he just kind of looked up at me and looked to his person. And then his person told him exactly what I had just said. And he nodded, okay.
There's some other, you know, silly things that have happened. Carly Simon, beautiful voice, great singer, had notorious stage fright. Getting her to perform in front of an audience at that time, she hadn't for a long time. She was really scared, nervous. And just before she was about to go on, she turns to me, we're in the wings before Dave's introducing her, and she said, hit me. I said, what? She goes, and she turns, she gives, turns her butt to me and she says, smack me on the ass as hard as you can right before I go out. Come on, I need it to help me forget that I'm nervous. So I smacked her and she went out and sang beautifully. Lou Reed was always, I think he was a little tough on the sound guys, but he always left happy, which is a credit to our, our audio department. Lou was really into Tai Chi and one of his last performances on the show, he wanted to have his Tai Chi master, Master Ren, perform while he sang. And, you know, we were open to it. It was Lou. Whatever Lou wanted to do, Lou could do. It was a bit odd, but it was well received. But the writers, of course, thought they came up with a funny comedy idea. The next day, there was a viewer mail letter, something about asking Dave what he did during the musical performances. Uh, what do you do in the dark when your guests are singing on stage, uh, Mary uh, Goodry? Uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This is a good question because we had uh, last night the uh, downtown Lou Reed was on it, and uh, while uh, Lou was singing, he had a guy doing Tai Chi. Remember that, Paul? Yes, Just sure, last night. Yeah. It was fascinating, and I, I admit that sometimes I sit there and I enjoy the performance, but it was a little different. Watch the tape from last night's show. Sunday morning brings the dawn in. It's just a restless feeling by my side Early dawning <laughs> Sunday morning It's just the waste one of the most memorable performances, in my opinion, was when the Beastie Boys did the show uh, for the song Check It Out. And they had a concept of what they wanted to do, and it was pretty magnificent. They uh, emerged from the subway. It was shot really well by our director, and, and they had their creative input, and it was a big success. You check, he's a TV addict. I mean, the dance don't mean to break static. Or you cling on to your grandma's house. Grab your back street friend to get loud. Future Islands, well, I will say, we didn't know Dave would be so taken with the performance. We saw the rehearsal, but he really gave it his all during the actual performance. And Dave was so taken by that and amused by it that it did become a viral sensation. We had no idea it would take off the way it did. When Pearl Jam's song Black was out, Dave was really taken with that melody, that da -da 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 -da. and he started doing it every night on the show. Why? We gotta hear a little Eddie Vedder, a little, little bit of Eddie, a little Pearl Jam, a little Black. You got it. Why? Nee, nee, nee. Yeah, it's my favorite part of the song when Eddie does this. Why? I have no idea what Eddie's saying. And then you do what? Nee, 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 That's nee, right. It's a great song. Why? Nee, 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 Goes nee. on for about an hour. Nee, 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 nee. Uh, okay, I'm starting to get on my own nerves. But one day, I got a call, and, and it was Eddie Vedder saying, 
I just want to put this to rest. But what can I do? It's freaking me out that Dave's doing this every night. And I said, well, you could come on the show. So he agreed to come on. It was amazing. I mean, that never happens. A huge star calling saying they want to come on the show. It just, and that was really fun. And then Pearl Jam has subsequently did the show a couple times and we've had a great relationship with them. Why? Yeah. Cool. You know what? Uh, Do you want to really know how that's done? Yeah. Have it done Do right? Do it for me. Do it for me. Okay. Eddie? Huh? Wait a minute. Eddie? No. Getting Paul McCartney on the show took probably years in the works. He agreed to do the show. He wanted to do something special. To us, having Paul McCartney on the show was special, but he wanted to make a big statement. And since the Beatles had made their network television debut on Ed Sullivan, it was appropriate for him to come to the theater. But he, we put him up on the marquee, so he was performing on Broadway. And it was just an amazing performance and just a wonderful celebratory event. And he came and listened to the mix beforehand and afterwards and he was a joy to work with. Another band that we had a wonderful relationship with was the Foo Fighters. Dave loved their music. They were the nicest guys in the world. Dave was out at, for a period. He had heart surgery. Of course, when he just was able to come back, we wanted to do something special. He had a request. He wanted the Foo Fighters to perform the song Everlong. He loved that song. And I spoke with their managers and said Dave would really love for them to be the first musical guest back. My management was like, I know they'd love to, but you know, they're, they're on tour. They're going to be in South America but let me see what I can do. And really shortly thereafter, I got a call back saying, yep, they'll do it. So they literally canceled some tour dates, flew in to be on Dave's return show. That relationship continued because they were our choice for our final musical guest in 2015. We asked them to perform on our final show, to perform Everlong because it was such an important song to Dave and we all loved it. On our final show, we were gonna have a montage of everyone who'd been on the show, et cetera. So basically I asked this huge band to be on the show performing, but they would be performing behind a screen, showing all the other guests on the show with a couple shots of them at the beginning. And once again, because they were such cool guys, they're like, yeah, no problem, we get it. There was no like, oh, I need X amount of camera time. And it was wonderful and memorable and the perfect way to end the show. One of Dave's favorite musicians was Warren Zevon, and he was a regular musical guest on the show, and he would also sit in for Paul. But sadly, in the early 2000s, Warren was diagnosed with a type of cancer, and he was not going to recover. And we were all devastated by the news. And I was in touch with Warren's people, and they said he wanted to come on the show and perform. And when Dave heard this, he said, well, if Lauren's coming to do the show, we should give him the entire show. It was really one of the most moving, I thought, memorable episodes of the show. It was real life, it was heartfelt, and Warren was such a pro, 
and he was funny, humorous, and poignant. From, from your perspective now, do, do you know something about uh, life and death that maybe I don't know now? Not unless I know how much, how much you're supposed to enjoy every sandwich, mm -hmm. you know? And after the show, equally poignant, was uh, Dave went up to Warren's dressing room afterwards and they were in there for a long time and I just, Dave came walking out holding a guitar case with clearly very upset and moved and Warren had given him his guitar. I was born to rock the boat Some may sink, we will float Grab your coat, let's get out of here Other performances were not always as well received. After one performance of a band I'll, I won't name, Dave came up to me at the end and he said, I hope they enjoyed their nap as much as we did.